How else are we supposed to get up there if we're not going to be hitchhiking and they're not going to put a bus? I don't have the money to take a train or a plane or anything like that. Greyhound's announcement this week that it would slash bus service to a large part of Canada, mainly in the West, was a blow to those who rely heavily on the service, including rural and Indigenous communities. And some are calling for the federal government to take action to replace the bus service. Greyhound Canada surprised many on Monday with the news that it will be shutting down all but one route in B.C., Alberta, Manitoba, Saskatchewan and Northern Ontario. They'll be gone at the end of October. Greyhound will continue serving Ontario and Quebec. The federal government said today it was also caught off guard by the news and Greyhound never told them it was cutting back. At no point in the conversations did uh, Greyhound uh, ever, uh, ever signal that they were completely cut services and that's an important fact. Still, a chorus of politicians is urging the Trudeau government to step in, calling this an issue of national importance. The NDP says federal funding is needed so that no community is left stranded. Here in British Columbia, we have the documented fact that the lack of bus services along the Highway of Tears led to uh, missing and murdered Indigenous women who had to rely on hitchhiking because there weren't any adequate bus services. And Alberta's Rachel Notley promises to raise the Greyhound issue with her fellow Premiers when they meet in New Brunswick next week. This is a fundamental issue around uh, basic ability to uh, a right to transportation. So as provincial and federal governments try to figure out how to fill the hole left by the bus giant, at least two companies say they're looking at stepping in. Aaron Salzman has a look at how this could unfold. The maritime bus Charlottetown Terminal. For some, it's the only way off the island. I'm heading to Halifax and again, unless I, I don't have a car, so it's the only way I can get back to Nova Scotia. To think they almost lost this service. In 2012, Acadian Lines pulled out of the region, citing financial losses. Maritime Bus stepped in. The company also operates school bus, municipal transit and charters, so it's more diversified, less dependent on long-haul trips, leaner and more efficient. You can have one singular management group. You can share expenses of mechanics, overheads in your shop. So a synergy of operation collectively the divisions do work. But could it work in the West, where Greyhound says the bus business isn't viable? I think that we can come up with a solution that would be cost effective. He says it might take government help and probably a coalition of private companies. Some are already set to hit the road. What we're proposing is that we're going to uh, fill the void on the routes in uh, Northern Ontario and Manitoba. Casper Wabinski runs Casper Transportation based in Thunder Bay. His service would be comparable to Greyhounds, but they'd use smaller vehicles. And instead of big terminals, they'd also cut costs by picking up passengers at transit stops or in parking lots. Fresh ideas that some say could be an improvement. One of the problems with Greyhound is I'm not sure how much attention they really gave to this area. We, we've certainly heard they had older buses here. It, it didn't sound to me like they were trying to grow the business. He says a patchwork of small, more custom operations might be more viable. Kasper Wabinski says that's his company in a nutshell. You know, I'm happy sometimes to have four people going to Fort Francis. And there would no doubt be people in Fort Francis who'd be pretty happy with that too. Aaron Saltzman, CBC News, Toronto. This isn't the first time Greyhound made cutbacks in the country. Recently, the last bus rolled out of Whitehorse after almost 50 years of service. The CBC's Philippe Morin was on board. The last Greyhound bus out of Whitehorse sold only seven tickets. A whopping seven passengers on our last trip out of Whitehorse. <laughs> okay, everybody on the bus, come on down. It's actually a little better than average for the route, which has been struggling for years. Welcome aboard our last scheduled trip, southbound Watson Lake, Fort Nelson, continuing Dawson Creek. It's about a thousand kilometer trip on the Alaska Highway. Greyhound says the route was recouping about a fifth of its expenses. The average ridership in 2017 was only three people. That's on a bus with 56 seats. Church says the ridership was low, but people often told him the route was important to them. 
lot of people depend upon the Greyhound for coming uh, to Whitehorse for medical appointments. So uh, what are they going to do? The answer may be another company. The Liard First Nation in Watson Lake says it's looking at starting a shuttle service. Going to miss it immensely. Brant's favorite part of the job has been people's reactions to the scenery. Listening to the, the oohs and the ahs, and he can almost feel the bus tip sometimes as you know, 14, 15 people migrate to one side of the bus in order to get the great pictures of the, the bears, the bison, and if you're fortunate, the wolf. Philippe Morin, CBC News, on the Alaska Highway.